Hey, LaMarcus, welcome back. Thank you. Can you walk us through the process and even the timeline a little bit of getting yourself to the point over the summer where you just felt comfortable that you wanted to come back and play again? Uh, yeah, so it was what happened happened. And then I announced, you know, I was going to retire. So I, didn't, I went back to Texas and then I immediately got with my doctor there and we started doing the uh, ultra tests and, you know, putting me through things so I could kind of feel comfortable with everyday life and just going, you know, getting on a treadmill or whatever. I mean, I think that was the <clears throat> first goal was, you know, everyday life, you know, being, being, uh, you know, comfortable with that. And then we kept doing testing and going from there and we wasn't, wasn't finding anything alarming, you know, with each step. So then that's what we, kept kind of building off of and then you know my agent got involved and then you know we started to work with people here in New York or whatever and then that was kind of like the ice on the cake but I would say um as soon as I announced it I was already trying to get testing done to make sure that I was okay to you know every day you know for everyday life and to come back I, I never sat down and was like I'm done done I just wanted to have the time to really do the testing and kind of figure it out and make sure I was okay first. Brian Lewis, New York Post. Hey, Lamarcus, welcome back. Um, I'm curious, Sean, when we talked to Sean Marks and I asked him about his conversations with you, he said, well, basically you, you can ask Lamarcus, but I tried to talk him out of it when he first <laughs> called. Is that an, is that a, accurate depiction of what happened and at what point I mean, did you also I don't know have any reticence from your wife I mean when you talked to your wife was she nervous about this whole process could you walk us through both of those conversations and how those went um he did try to sway me um Sean's a great guy and very understanding guy so he definitely uh he was like, do you want to take some time with this, that, and this? But when you have something traumatic happen to you, um, you really can't focus on basketball at that moment. You kind of got to focus on your health. Um, so at that point, um, it was a very scary night for me, a, you know, a, a scary experience during the game. Um, so I had to just take the time, go see people that I knew, and that's why I went back to Texas, the people who helped me do this case study in the beginning when I went to San Antonio, I had the one episode I, I think everyone, you know, heard about um, where I was out indefinitely. So we did a number of studies with that group there. And then they kind of gave me the parameters of what I should feel and shouldn't feel and how things should go and how they wouldn't go. And everything that happened in that game was opposite of what we had found out. So that was the most alarming thing was we did all this research and then it was all wrong. So I had to get back to them and kind of understand what happened, what changed, what was going on now, and then go from there. And, you know, he was very understanding. He said he couldn't, you know, understand what I was going through because no one can unless you're in it, but never pressured me. But he did say, like, you know, do you want to try to take some time? And my whole thing is um, I'm not selfish. Like, I could have took the time and tried to go home and, wait it out but then I feel like I'm kind of keeping the guys here at suspense you know dangling over their head or whatever is he coming back is he coming so I just feel like it was the, the cleanest thing to do for myself mentally and for the guys here was just to walk away so then they knew I was done I wouldn't be on the back of you know I wouldn't be in the back of their minds as you know things went on and I had the time and I could just figure it out. Brian Mahoney Associated Press. Hey, Marcus, uh, I think one of the things Sean said when he tried to talk about it was, you know, he doesn't need this. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, why, basically? Why am I back? Yeah, I mean, you don't need to be playing anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah with the mask. Uh, why? Because I wasn't ready to stop, for one. And two, like I was helping, you know, I'm biased. I was helping the best team in the NBA win games and I was fitting in well and I was having fun and I was enjoying basketball. So that's why I still love the game. I'm still capable of uh, helping this team win. I still can bring some to the table. So that's why, because I still love the game. I want to play. 
Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Hey, LaMarcus, welcome back. Just to clarify, you know, it came out, at, I think it was a few weeks in August, it said that you were aiming for a comeback and then it was announced you were coming here. Did you look in and signing with any other teams or was this the only situation you wanted to, to be a part of? Uh, I might have talked to maybe one other, but I knew I was going to come back here. It was just, you know, unfinished business. I never really got to experience it with these guys. I never got to the postseason with these guys. So it was kind of like, you know, it, it was the the best thing for me was to come back here, you know, and let's see, you know, like what could have been or whatever. So um, I enjoy the guys here. They welcomed me with open arms. They uh, supported me from day one. You know, it was a very short stint here, but um, I enjoyed every day of it. So why not come back? Justin Walters picks 11. Does this still feel surreal for you being back? And do you think there'll be any nerves once you step on the court? Uh, it does feel a little, I wouldn't say surreal. It feels weird. I feel like I took like a, a five month all-star break and now I'm, I'm back and like, it's the second half of the season, but it's not, it's like the, the beginning of the season. So I would say it definitely feels a little bit weird to have such a long break, but nerves. No, nah, I mean, I think I've been put through so many tests, you know, uh, on the court, on the treadmill that. I won't have any nerves. I mean, this is what I do. I play basketball and, you know, I've been doing it all my life. I think it's going to be more about excitement and, you know, being anxious to be out there again and just enjoy the moment. Lisa Shu, Tencent. Hi, welcome back, Lamarcus. Uh, two questions. First, uh, um, when you look back the five games you play here, what remember the most? What the most, most, um, What's, what's the most valuable things you remember from this team? And second question is, when you watch the second round of the playoffs last season, do you feel like, okay, if I was there, the result could be different? Uh, to the first part, I remember uh, just having fun. Um, you know, I, I made my first shot and then, you know, I'm in the game and, you know, Kai says, hey, and, you know, all the guys, you know, started clapping and, you know, they like celebrated me being here. And that was pretty cool because I had never been, you know, been in, in that position before. And the one game I played really well uh, versus Charlotte or whatever, I remember, you know, Kai was doing like my fade away. And so it was just fun to have guys embrace you and just have fun and, you know, and just win, you know, with those guys. Um, watching the playoffs was definitely tough because I think if you're a competitor, you know, you always feel like, you know, you can help and you could, try to make things better. So it, it was definitely tough watching it. And I did feel like, you know, if I was here, you know, I could have definitely done something. Adam Zagoria, Forbes. Hey, LaMarcus, welcome back. Um, did you ever get to the point where you knew what you might be doing if you retired? Like, if you weren't playing in the NBA, <laughs> what what would you be doing? And And also how special, you know, obviously you guys have a chance to win a championship this year. How special does it make this year for you with that opportunity, you know, given what you've been through? Um, yeah, as I was going through the process, I did start to go down a, the other road a little bit. I did NBA TV. I don't know if anyone saw that. That was a different experience. Um, and then I was just meeting with different real estate companies that that's what I'm big into is, you know, just real estate companies, uh, uh commercial stuff. So I did that, but, um, I think coming back and winning it would be, you know, it'd be dope. You know, I think that's the reason why I'm back is. Um, I want to win. I still have something to give. I still love the game, and I don't. I don't want to let that one three days that those three days, you know, kind of uh, right the you know the the end of my career. I want to you know kind of do it on my own terms, and that's why I did everything I did over the last five months to get back. I want to go out on my own terms. Next question is on Zoom. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, Lamarcus, how's it going? Um, Glad to have you back and good to see you in, in good health. Um, can, can you I think you kind of touched on it earlier, saying that, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily know what it was that you had to go through and what you felt. Can you kind of explain or describe what it was that you felt on the floor that night or those nights and, and kind of describe how scary those moments were? Um, I kind of said a tiny bit, but it's just like. Say you have something wrong with you and then they say. Um, this is how it's A, B, and C is going to happen. And 
B should take care of A and then C should take care of B. So it's a way to get out of it. So if you're in a game and you have this and this, then this should make it happen. So if you have this checklist in your mind of something you've dealt with your whole career and how to get out of it and you do all three of those things and you don't get out of it, then you start freaking out like, oh, okay, like this is what I've kind of, you know, uh, learned and I've been taught, like, this is how I fix what's going on. So that night, A, B, and C wasn't working for me. So then I was like, okay, like, what is this? And then you get home and then you have a irregular rhythm more than normal. And then chest tightness. It was just a combination of things I had never experienced that came after what I had never experienced. So it was just, uh, it was just kind of like a overwhelming 24 hours of new experiences with a heart condition that I went to a guy in Baltimore. I went to a guy in Austin. I had a guy in San Antonio and all three guys put together a game plan for me of how I should feel and what should happen at each stage of a game or workout or whatever. And it's like that whole, uh, that all that research was kind of like flushed down the drain with one game because then I had never been in that position before. We have time for two more. We'll go to Bob Windrum, Nets Daily. Earlier today, we had James Harden, Blake Griffin, Paul Millsap all talk about the Nets performance team and how important that was to them in coming back and, and just getting better and getting ready for the season. What was your experience both last year and, and, and now with, the, uh, with that team? Uh, the performance team has been great. Um, they're very hands-on as much as you want them to be, but they also uh, can give you a distance if you're a routine guy like I am. Um, they do their research. Uh, you know, they're bringing things to you. They're trying to make you better in every way. So I feel like uh, last year was great. And then even back, to, even this year, you know, with my transitioning back in, they've been great too. Last question for LaMarcus, James Herbert, CBS Sports. Hey, LaMarcus, um, you said when you announced your retirement, you were still kind of getting tests done. You were thinking I might not be done, done at this point. What was it like at that time when on the one hand, you're thinking that you're thinking I can still contribute if I can get on the court. But at the same time, people are writing retrospectives about your career on television. They're talking about your accomplishments. And I'm sure you're getting a ton of people reaching out to you directly, talking about it and congratulating you for a career. Um. Maybe I, I said that wrong. Um, when the first happened, I was done and I was trying to just just figure out, you know, everyday life. So it was a little bit overwhelming having people talk about me, you know, a little bit overwhelming, you know, people texting me because I really, at that moment, I thought, let's swear about, you know, me being able to get on the treadmill because I, I want to stay fit. So in back of my mind, I thought I was done and, you know, it, it was – you know, it was tough to uh, process. So it was more about let's go from, you know, can you do treadmill? Can you go for a run outside? Can you do these, you know, activities? So then as I went through those activities, then that's when I started to transition to, well, maybe I can keep doing more and maybe I can keep doing more. But in the beginning, though, like, it, you always have a, a what if of like, maybe I'm not done, but I think that night was so dramatic for me where it was like, I'm definitely done. Let's just make sure I'm good. And I think as I did the test more and more, that gave me the confidence to then start to think, okay, maybe I'm not done. And then I went down, you know, like more, you know, like more tests and more tests. But in the beginning, I was so freaked out. Like, like he said, like Sean was like, can we get you on the court and put like a little monitor on you? And I was like, no, I don't want to get on the court. Like I was freaked out to the point where I didn't even want to get on the court. So initially I did think I was, but I think as I did more testing, that gave me the confidence to say, you know what, I'm not done. Thank you, LaMarcus. 